NDAA was bad, National Defense Authorization Act of last week was bad. If you thought that that was hardcore, uh, the secret arrest of Americans, the end of posse comitatus, military on the streets, the whole world a battlefield, if you thought all the announcements that they want to take your pension funds and put them into government control was bad, if you thought any of this MF Global stuff was bad, this new piece of intel that came in today that we researched all day and then put an article out just an hour or so ago on or less, if you think that uh, all of that was crazy, this little piece was a crystallizer, was a, was a f uh, real indicator of just how serious things are. And what am I talking about? Well, there it is on screen right there. Exclusive government activating FEMA camps across America, across the United States. And of course, uh, that's, 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 that's quite a headline. Uh, we have the emails, we have the internal Halliburton KBR documents, government defense and infrastructure, not for public eyes, uh, restricted info sent to us by people in government. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, it's got the five regions for the FEMA camps and it talks about barricades and barbed wire and, 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 and armed guards. And uh, it, it says that they've built the camps and that now they need to get ready to staff them and that they need to be ready within a 72 hour period for the guards and the, and the, and the, and the people in the canteen with the food and the launderers and, and just the whole nine yards. There it is. So they've been setting this up for more than two decades. And now they uh, started earlier in the year, what, back in February of this year, advertising for, for upwards of 100,000 internment specialists here in the United States. And now we're learning where they'll be at. Now, now this particular manning of the camp is your local sports stadium, your local FEMA center. Uh, these are 300-person camps to 1,000-person camps where they then interrogate you and go over things. And then you're sent off to the one million man camps. Uh, that uh, we're going to be breaking down. But I tell you what, I did a whole report on this. Oh, thank you, Marcos. Appreciate that water. Uh, I've done a whole report on this that's coming up. But I suggest that you do what anybody with common sense, and of course our listeners, I think I have a little extra common sense. I would call your friends and family right now. And I would tell them to mosey on over to Infowars.com so they can see this information. And I, I would tell them to get this information because it's a lengthy article that Kurt Nemo and I put together this afternoon. It goes over all of it. And it's got links to films and congressional hearings uh, and uh, admissions of all of this. And so I want to challenge everybody to call their friends and their families now and realize that the new economy is to put tens of millions of people we already have the biggest prison population in the world in in this in this archipelago this 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 giant chain of facilities all over the country because it's all there all the government documents all the government admissions a civilian inmate labor camp program run by the army where they're at all the details down to how they're going to break the families up and where the children go and the forced inoculations and everything. The executive orders, the, the legislation, the congressional hearings. But I tell you, Glenn Beck used to giggle and laugh a couple years ago. He really enjoyed that. Where for over a month he built it up that I think FEMA camps are real. We've done an investigation and we're going to expose it on this date. Then the date would come, and he's, oh, I'm sorry, we're not ready, but it's bad what we're finding. And then a day later, after saying, oh, oh we have popular mechanics, the yellow journalism specialist of, of the uh, you know, famous you know, family of yellow journalism uh, that uh, wrote the book on it, they made a movie about it with Orson Welles, Citizen Kane. And they came out and they said that, oh, I'm, I, I did research, none of it's true, it's all fake. And they said, look at this website, it's a photo of a North Korean prison, doesn't exist here. And uh, look at this website, 
you know, they say that this train station is a FEMA camp. And I had even predicted a few days before that they would go with that straw man attack because I'd sent them all the information. I could see what they were doing. And this is the military industrial complex absorbing America and, and basically declaring a police state and, and reinstituting a form of slavery. They ship drugs in, they make laws where if you use the product that they ship in, you go to prison and you work for 25 cents an hour. And the good old boys get on talk radio and say, good, make prisoners work. But did you ever think it's taxpayer paid for, the profits are privatized off of slave labor, you got four million plus people working in slave labor, and they work for below on average 25 cents an hour? What's that gonna do to your wages? You think China's driving down your wages? You think Mexico, you think India, you think Paraguay is driving down your wages? At least there, it's pretty much a prison, but the families are getting something. This is people in prisons that are taxpayer paid for, and then the profit is off of somebody working for 25 cents an hour or less. Telemarketing, furniture, license plates, uh, refurbishing computers. And by the way, the Japanese American main group has come out and said they're worried about the NDAA and secret arrest of Americans and all the rest of this. I mean, it just boggles the mind that all of this is happening. And then on the heels of the NDAA, they are now, they've built the camps, they've admitted the camps are going in, and now they want the personnel to man them. And they say, you've got to be signed up at, uh, starting next year in February, and you've got to be ready from them on out. You're given a basic contract to be standing by to man the camps. So they're paying groups now to man the camps. I mean, let me think. They've been building the camps for decades. They've been keeping them quiet, but they're on old military bases and, and private facilities. That's admitted now in the, in the Emergency Centers Establishment Act. It, it, it documents that our analysis was spot on. It's exactly what we had seen them building and constructing, but we were only piecing it together and reverse engineering, and it confirmed it all and more. In fact, it stunned me how accurate we were with the pieces we had. But now all the pieces are in the jigsaw puzzle. And so these things are in place. They build a bunch of them, small ones, medium ones, huge one million person camps. I mean, that's a big city. That's, that's a camp the size of Austin, Texas. I mean, my God. <laughs> and it, it talks about the civilian inmate labor camp. It says you're going to work in these. And I've heard Michael Savage years ago say, we're going to make these people that are in the camps work. We're not going to pay for you. No, I know you're going to work for, for nothing and then displace everybody else's jobs. I mean, I guess the slave camps that Walmart and others have bought their goods from in China, they're just going to move them here now. And, of course, who cares if uh, the Constitution says all this is wrong? They have uh, basically thrown that down the toilet. Makes the crimes of Nixon look like uh, something a choir boy uh, would do. So Rex 84 is in place. All of this has happened. All of this has been done. And I am live here at 732 Central. 8.32 Eastern, reporting to you live right now, asking you to call your friends and family and to have them go to InfoWars.com. Project overview and anticipated project requirements, lining the people up to now man the camps right as the world economy collapses by design, right as the New World Order banking system is announced, right as the sovereignty is butchered, right as they get rid of posse commentators, right as they tell you they're going to arrest you, right as it comes out that they're calling mainline protesters terrorists and telling cops this, right as this treason is trotted out in everybody's face, exclusive government activating FEMA camps across America. It's one thing to build them. I saw a couple years ago where they were taking and refurbishing the old Japanese camps for use. That was in Associated Press. I mean, this is so chilling. And then you see people like Colbert making fun of this, and, and, and I mean, you know, that's coming up later in the show we taped. It's just so sad this has to happen. I mean, this is not going to be good for 99.9% .9 of us. This is not good for our society. The globalists have a philosophy of eugenics and post-industrial world and uh, shutdown of the uh, economy. And you look at what happened to the Japanese, 
where they took, many of them owned companies and shipping companies and fishing companies and, and, and big farms, very hardworking people in the free market system. Some of them were millionaires in the 1940s, which is like being worth hundreds of millions a day. And they just took their stuff, raped their women in many cases. And their sons still, though, to prove themselves, went and joined the U.S. military and went and fought and died valiantly in the uh, European uh, theater. I mean, as if somebody who'd been American for 100 years couldn't be trusted. And they arrested some Italians and some Germans as well. In fact, Fredericksburg, outside Austin, they put up signs saying that they were a, uh, a uh, Dutch or, or Croatian, depending on which sign they put up, uh, community. And they said, oh, we're not German. They took all the German signs down. Now it's a big tourist trap. And, uh, you know, ran around saying, hey, don't, 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 you know, don't come after us. Uh, we're, we're not German. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, if we had a war with England, when we start arresting anybody who had an English name, oh, my name's Jones, or let's say we had a war with Mexico, which could happen. Mexico is just totally collapsed, out of control. Would we arrest everybody with the name Gonzalez or Hernandez? I, I mean, this is what we're talking about. And then you get the internal documents, and they are saying they're going to go after people who are constitutionalists, people who actually understand what's going on. I mean, remember, Fox News and Glenn Beck said there were no FEMA camps when it was in the Wall Street Journal before it got bought by Rupert Murdoch. I mean, this is the type of stuff that we're facing. Again, I shot it like an hour and 45 minutes. There were a few scrubs, a few graphics that went haywire. It's an incredible transmission tonight. Uh, you know, sure, it gets seen by members of PrisonPlanet.tv, and then it goes out on the web later to everybody else. And I'm sad that our average newscast only gets seen by a couple hundred thousand people. And, uh, and, and over a week, a few million watch the show. But, you know, my show started small on Access TV. The radio reaches three million a day now. But, but it's just, this is powerful stuff. This needs to be seen. But the number one thing, I mean, I'm, I'm exhausted, but I can't wait to get uh, on the radio tomorrow and cover this article. Because the greatest thing of my 17 years of, of, of busting my hind end for a great cause of liberty, it's, it's been an honor, not a, not, a, not a hindrance, is that now we've built enough of a platform that when we hit it hard, and when you hit it hard, when we get the information out on Twitter, Facebook, and the globalist weapon systems, using it against them, and on your email and on other talk radio shows, that we're able now, every week at least, used to be every few months, now it's every week, every day, to punch through the Berlin Wall of disinformation and to force a debate and a discussion about what's really happening. And we are getting numbers from police that call us and send us information that now 40, 50, 60 percent of their departments are waking up. Because I and Ron Paul and others were willing to go out and talk about FEMA camps and military on the streets and stuff that sounded crazy, now as it's happening, people are like, whoa, you're not a tinfoil hat wearer, you are Nostradamus. This is coming true. In fact, I had a, an army officer call me last week and he said, I was known as, uh, his name is Bruce, you know, I was known as a tinfoil Bruce, now I'm known as Bruce Adamus. And that's the same experience, because who cares if idiots laugh at you who are uninformed? I mean, that's like coming in and uh, your two-year-old's pouring the cereal on their head, and you tell them, don't do that, it makes a mess. The two-year-old laughs at you. You don't get mad at the two-year-old pouring cereal on their head. You realize it's a two-year-old. And so you're like, governments using the military, bad, mega banks creating false currency, and signing you onto the debt, bad. And the, and the public's like, no, like a child at you, feel sorry for them. Plant the seed dozens of times with them laughing. Because this is how we're going to beat the globalist. I mean, it's not even a debate. Who cares if some poor person who's ignorant laughs at you? It just, it'd be like if you pulled up to some, you know, autistic person's house and you said your house is on fire and they went, and ran past you. So what? You call the fire department. You saved them. They don't know. Don't take it personally.